guys. Good to see your faces again today. Uh, we were having a discussion earlier today about how easy it is to fall in love and that honeymoon phase and all of that. But then how do you stay in love once you fall in love? So we're in such a society of leavers. And when we don't get our way, we leave. If somebody says something that offends us, we leave. If we don't agree with the policy, we leave. Um, and how do you stay uh, long term? Because we know, like, when you're, especially in business, when you keep up rooting over and over and over again, you set yourself back. You can sometimes even can set yourself back years, um, as well as making yourself look maybe not as stable in business when you, you know, you jump from ship to ship to ship. And so how do you, how do you, uh, keep the music playing, so to speak? And, um, you know, we've talked about this before, but there are several reasons that an agent will leave a brokerage. And one of them is that they're not producing. They're not producing anything. They're not seeing, um, that the needle is moving forward in any way. And then another reason is because they're not in community, they don't have a, a friend and they, you know, they kind of feel unplugged. And then a third reason is because they're not celebrated sometimes. So we all like to be celebrated. And so I know with the three of us and our entire leadership team and our, and our coaches and our um, instructors, all of our leaders at Monument, we are hyper-focused on making sure our agents are productive, making sure that we are celebrating each other um, and making sure that we are in community, we know each other, um, we know each other's goals and uh, we're a family. So um, what do you guys think? How do you stay in love? Al, how do you stay in love with the same person? For how many years have you been married? You told me you're, you and Angela, your wife, you've been together since high school. Yeah. So. Uh, high school sweethearts. We uh, they went to college together at UT. Uh, dated during college as well, and then got married in 1999. So that is this year will be 20. What's it? 24 years. Good lord, that is a long time. But <laughs> here's the cool thing about it, though: it doesn't feel like a long time. It feels like it was just yesterday. So when you have a situation where you are in a relationship that uh, you don't feel like you're doing all the work, right? You're not the one that's constantly pouring in to somebody else, uh, but that person is also pouring into you and that you're growing together. Uh, you can stay in a relationship like that. That's the kind of relationship that you want. And so uh, so that's why I've been able to do that there on, on, the, on the personal side. And then as far as business goes, you know, um, I was at Century 21 from 1994 all the way to 2015. And then Keller Williams, 2015 until uh, 2021, 2022. What? What is this? 23. So I don't know. When did I get to Monument? It's been a year and a half. So, uh, and it's been a great year and a half. And I think the big thing for most people, though, is that they don't understand that life or well, the, the, the grass is greenest where you water it, right? Where you care for it, where you work to, to keep it green. And so although your grass might look a little brown and you see green grass on the other side, you think, oh, okay, that's where I need to be. Uh, you certainly, we see it a lot. Uh, people learn that that grass doesn't stay green if you don't go over there and care for it. And so it will turn brown too. So a lot of a lot of what allows a person to stay somewhere or to stay with someone or some company has a lot to do with the individual themselves. The yeah. more you work on yourself, the more you work on your craft, the more you work to add value, the more valued you will become. And if you don't become valued or you see that your value is not appreciated or understood, there will come a time where you'll understand, okay, no, I've got a lot of value. I might need to make a move. And so that that happens uh, at times. But a lot of people prematurely make that move. They don't understand the value that they think they have. <clears throat> Not really all that, right? Because if it is 
it is very difficult for a company that sees your value and knows how important you are to the overall um, product to allow you to leave. They will work to try to keep you there. If it looks like you're about to leave, and a lot of times really good companies are on this before you even think about leaving. Right. They understand, okay, I need to keep this person. This person is essential to what we do, and they bring value. So I'm going to make sure that they understand how valued they are, and I'm not going to let them get in a mind space to where they start looking at other things. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And I, I love what you said about, you know, it, it's green where you water it. it. It takes time, too. It takes time. It takes water. It takes sunshine. It takes a lot of things to make something grow. And I'm just thinking about, you know, um, a sermon I heard one time that Bishop Jakes preached about the difference between being buried and being planted. And sometimes we feel like we're we're buried. We're not seeing all the work that's going on underneath we don't give it enough time so we uproot and we go somewhere else but but the truth is lots of work is going on underneath the ground like this the strength is happening in the roots underneath the ground and that takes time if you'll stay put and keep pouring water and keep pouring sunshine and it and it's you know us as leaders we have to pour that in that's our responsibility but you're right it the agent you know, as a business owner, we've got to pour into our own um, success and our own stability um, as a business. Do you agree, Trisha? Yes, absolutely. But you know what? We're in a different time and nobody's ever been in this time before. If I would ask my dad, like, hey, how did you decide to work the jobs that you work? He would say, jobs? I had one job. Yeah. Like, I worked at Ford from the time that I graduated from college till I retired. And I was like, wow, in this day and age, that's crazy to us because if there's opportunities out there and and technology has changed so many things and and just, you know, having the ability to learn so much just through the internet and just be able to enhance your skills um, so that you can get better opportunities. I think now the challenge is the companies have to stay ahead of the changes that are going to be happening or else they are going to look for another shiny penny or somewhere else that's better. And I think that's something that just probably happened in the last, I mean, we've always been excelling in, in business and stuff, but I think in the past 10 years, it's like completely switched to where the companies have to be aware of what the needs are of the people that they are in business with. Absolutely. I think what has happened, especially this younger generation, um, they all feel that, you know, we, we, they've been nurtured to, to, to feel like this, that we are valuable, that we, you know, even whether they are, uh, uh merit being held to as high of a standard as they think they, they are, uh, they come out almost like, Hey, no, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be taken care of a certain way. I'm supposed to be looked at a certain way. You're supposed to do this for me. And that's kind of the society that we live in. It's a me, me, me thing. Unfortunately, if they were able to learn that there's value in, there's value. Let me do it like this. I remember my, my late great pastor, uh, Dr. ML Scott told me as a, youngster and I was in junior high that in life for those to be truly successful and to to really live life to its fullest they have to learn that you don't get to get to give to get and so you have to give of yourself uh first and that should be the the, the thought process and if you give of yourself you'd be surprised how many people are willing to give back to you Right. So that, that, that matter of trying to get something from somebody else because you've poured into them, because you've done things for them or done things for others that they've witnessed, they are willing and wanting to pour into you, to have you be a part of what they've got going on. And so a lot of this younger generation, uh, does it, they, they don't have quite the appreciation for 
what they have to do first to really uh, gain that 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 true value. So they leave a lot of times too soon. You leave too soon. Get to be truly valuable, and then when you make that move, it'll be for a truly uh, um, warranted reason, right? That somebody really sees your value and they're willing to, whether it's compensate or appreciate it, then that's the reason to make a move. Well, and let's insert this really quick. Let's talk about just for a few seconds. There are reasons to leave sure. uh, relationships or businesses or brokerages or b business partnerships. Um, and what are those reasons? Let's just address that really quickly. And I would say a toxic environment, a toxic where people are negative and where people are divisive and, and um, you know, backbiting, gossipy, mean-spirited, that sort of thing, or, or um, an environment that is just, okay, we'll take your office fees and then good luck with your hopes and dreams. You know, that they don't, they don't really care and they're not really invested and they're not really going anywhere. I heard you say, you said before that some people suffer, Al, from Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Right. Yeah. A mega friend of mine is a, a sufferer of Stockholm Syndrome that they just, you know, they become, uh, you know, they, they, they love their captor. So it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty funny. Um, and I think too, like sometimes, you know, you need to leave for a long time. And I think what, that's kind of what you mean about Stockholm Syndrome too. Like you maybe the, the person that you've been connected with in your business partnership or even, you know, personally, or maybe you're an agent and you're your broker and they're not good to you. They're not good to you. Like it's, it's kind of like we started out talking, you're at the giving is a one way street and you're doing all the giving and they're not good to you. But if you are a person who has a strong sense of loyalty, it will almost take extreme measures to get you to leave. And then once you're gone and you're in a healthy place, you're looking back thinking, oh my gosh, what took me so long? I'm so much happier now. I'm so much more productive. I'm connected with like-minded people that are going in the same direction I'm going in. Why did I stay so long? But we kind of have this almost irrational sense of loyalty that we, you know, we feel like we should stay and we stay a lot longer than we should, I think. So well, it's that it's that you don't know what you don't know. Also, right. like how many people still have Direct TV? I mean, I don't know what they've done to upgrade to compete with like Netflix and YouTube TV. And I probably spend the same amount now that I spent on Direct TV because I have all the apps and all the things. Wow! But it's so much easier, and people are still like my there. There are people that still have like cable, and I'm like, what? You don't need cable, but they just don't know what they don't know. And they, some people are just afraid of the learning curve to, to take a minute to figure out how to use it to make their lives easier. So, so sometimes people won't leave because, because they're just afraid of change. And so that's fine too. Great. But I feel like that, um, that everyone is, has one opportunity to make the most of whatever it is. And if you're in a place where you don't feel like that you, you've grown or you've, you've been given the opportunity to be the best at whatever it is that you're doing, then maybe you should take a look at somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, that's just honest. And, and, you know, there are different, um, brokerages with different personalities and different philosophies of business and different, and we're not people, you know, we work at Monument Realty. We're not people that think everybody belongs at Monument. Everybody does not belong at Monument. We have a certain kind of agent that we look for a, a certain gifting set, a certain personality type, a certain heart. And we look for that kind of person. And sometimes we come across agents that are really great hearted people, but it's just kind of, you know, real estate's kind of a hobby to them, or maybe it's just a career, but we look for someone that it's not just a hobby, not just a career, but it's a calling that they are called to serve people out there and to protect people and to fight for people and, um, you know, to, to, um, uphold all the standards, you know, that we, that we have too. So we don't think we're for everyone. That's not what we're about, but we, what we do so well. And I think, uh, you were saying it, Al too, that, you know, part of our job as leaders is to anticipate the needs of our people. And I think we do that very well. Um, 
we want to look ahead and see what they're going to need before they need it. And that is any successful relationship, if you think about it. Um, you're, you guys have both been married for many, many, many years. I am in a strong marriage as well. But I think that, uh, you know, there's a commitment, the commitment factor. We know we're committed. We're not going anywhere. If we disagree, it's okay. We'll work it out. Um, we spend a lot of time together. We're bound to get on each other's nerves at some point, but we don't, we're not going anywhere. We have a commitment. We're, we're a team. We stay together, but also that, in, you know, my husband can anticipate when something's going to be a problem down the road for me because he knows me. He knows me. He knows my personality. He knows what's important to me. He knows what's upsetting to me. He knows what my challenges are. And he knows what my dreams are. We know each other. And that's why that commitment works. That's why we stay planted. And uh, I can see both of you. I see you both nodding. You you are in agreement. That's what may. Yep. Go ahead, Tricia. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it is a commitment. And when you say family, like, I can't get rid of my brother. Like, he's my brother. <laughs> so when you get married, you're like, like you go to jail if you do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but if I look at marriage like that, unless it's absolutely last, you know, last option on the table to get a divorce, I'm going to fight through all the things. And I've been married for 20 years and I'm still fighting through all the things. It, nothing's perfect. That whole idea of like having the perfect relationship, the perfect this, the perfect, there's nothing perfect. You're fighting every day. Right now, I can tell you this, this season of my life, I'm learning how not to get mad when he's mad. Like if he got upset about something, yeah, I always get mad back at him because I feel like that's not fair for him to be mad at me. <laughs> and then he's like, why are you getting mad at me? I'm mad at you. And I'm like, because you're mad at me, I'm mad at you. This hurt. So I'm still working on how to like figure it out. <laughs> but I tell you one thing that's really good about you, Trisha, I will compliment you on this is because we spend so much time together. But if there was ever a time that, you know, whenever... And we don't ever get mad at each other. But if there was something we disagree on, you'll call me immediately and say, okay, what I do, I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. What I, <laughs> what I do, instead of saying, hey, what's your problem? You're, you know, you look inward first and say, okay, is, if there's something I've done, let me know. And then we'll, what, you know, and I think that communication is so important. And especially with, between us and our agents, that if we sense that something's off, that we're we're on it we don't yeah. let it it's not one of those things well like as you were saying okay you're gonna if you're gonna have an attitude i'm gonna have an attitude i i've seen that so many times but not you know we go straight to what we think the the issue might be and we try to solve it uh, uh we were riding in the car the other day custer and i and i'm smiling and talking and he's like okay what's wrong and i'm like nothing he was like what's wrong dina and I'm like, how do you know something's wrong with me? Like, I'm smart. I'm a great actress. What are you doing? <laughs> but my acting ability? But you know why I can't hide anything from him? It, be it goes back to because he knows me. And he knows, like, and if we don't know the people that we're serving, whether it be our agents or our agents, if they don't know their clients, um, then sometimes you don't know when something's wrong because you you don't sense it because you're not close enough to them and you haven't spent enough time with them so I, and you know as our company has grown that's become more and more of a challenge to make sure we're like we know the people we are working with and so all three of us we we have a commitment to be intentional about that um about knowing who who we're working with and if we feel like there is an agent we don't know very well it bothers us. It really bothers us. And we, you know, we make a, make a plan to, to rectify that. I love that. Yeah. I think the, here's a great analogy. If you, if you're standing in a cold room and there's a fireplace there and you walk over to the fireplace, expecting it to warm you, yet a fire has not been established in the fireplace. It's not going to warm you. So there's some work you have to do. You have to go get the wood. You have to go light the fire. You have to build the fire to get warm. So you can't expect to stand in front of something or be involved in something 
or have a relationship with somebody and not put in work to get a response back or to get a desired result. And so a lot of people do that. They show up, but they don't show up to put in to get back, right? They show up expecting, okay, that fire is already supposed to be roaring and making the room nice and warm, but they won't do what's necessary to build the fire. And so even in a relationship, when, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll say this, I'm sure Angela's going to be, so Angela, Angela has an ability. If, I, if I've gotten on her nerves, I've done something, uh, Angela will, nobody can play the silent game better. As a kid, she must have been a bit, he must, he must, he must, he must all-time champion, right? Because she can play the silent game. I mean, to where I don't know what she sounds like anymore. She'll go that quiet. Uh, and so my response to that used to be, well, I could play too, right? I could do that too. We're, we're going to both be quiet. This is going to be you know, real quiet in here. But I can't, she's going to always win because in me, that I feel like I got to go build that fire. I can't, I can't let her be in that place. So let me do the work to, 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 to end the side of the trade, right? And so, but the problem is most people aren't <clears throat> wired to say, okay, let me find a resolution to this. They'll just say, mm, I'm out, forget it. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll just play the silent treatment until, until the kids graduate. And then I think we're going to do <laughs> right. But that's kind of the way people do not only in their personal relationships, but even in business. So if you have a problem, you know, we had, uh, a young lady who was upset about something because there was some recognition she was supposed to get. Obviously, she was supposed to get it. Was a, it was a terrible mishap. We just missed it. But I knew that, okay, I can't now co-sign on your disappointment, right? I can acknowledge it, but now I'll work to make sure that you know how important you are. This was simply a mishap, but you are essential to what we do. And what you have accomplished is amazing. And I apologize for any neglect of that. And so you let, you, 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 any issue, any obstacle, whatever, you have to know that is something that you have to address. You have to fix, you have to work, you have to put in the work, even if you don't understand why it's an issue or understand why this is a problem, understand why this is not getting done. If you want it to get fixed, you got to put in work, right? You got to address it. You got to confront it and then figure out what's necessary for everything to, to go the way it needs to go. Yeah. And I think nine times out of 10 problems, like, like the one that you were talking about, they, everything goes south because of the lack of communication and you, you've got to address, um, the issue and not just bury your head in the sand and, and hope it goes away. Um, someone who was a mentor to all three of us, and I won't mention their name without their permission. They, they are not at Monument, but they were a mentor to all three of us. Uh, this person taught me that in times of uncertainty, you increase communication. You don't, you don't go silent. You increase communication. You just call it out. Go, go search for the answer. What is going on? Because it's not, um, it, you know, even in, in a marriage or a friendship um, or a business relationship, if there's tension, what's the most important thing? We want to be right or win the argument or, you know, prove a point, or do we want to solve the problem and, you know, restore the, the peace and restore the unity and, and make things right? And, and like you said, Al, sometimes we, we make mistakes. We're human beings. We make mistakes. We, we drop the ball on that particular situation, but it, here's where trust is built is when you acknowledge what went wrong and you don't make excuses for it. You don't pass the buck. You don't blame someone else. You take responsibility for it and you apologize and you fix it. And that's how trust is built. And sometimes it ends up being better than if it had never happened at all because they see you leading in that way and leading with that kind of integrity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And others, we don't realize by the time, but others 
see in it in in are aware of how you handle certain situations. Even if you didn't know they were even involved, knew certain things were happening, but you know somehow this this you know an issue gets back to somebody else, and so others are waiting to see how you handle that issue because they say if that's how you handle them, then that's how you would handle me or not handle me, right? Or the, how you would, would, would handle a situation I was involved in. So what you're also doing is putting it out there for everybody else to understand that, no, this is this is how we do, this is how I operate, and, and there's some consistency to this. So if at any time something happens that doesn't seem to be consistent with what I have displayed on a regular basis, you should know in the back of your mind that, okay, I'm missing something else. My, per my perception here of what's happening might not be right because that's not how Al operates, right? And then you'll feel comfortable saying something to me about it and then we can discuss it and we'll figure out what, what really happened. But like you said, Dina, if there's, the communication is not there, it that situation gets worse and a lot of times it ends in a situation that didn't have to happen because it was simply a misunderstanding. And so uh, communication is very important um, and making sure maintaining a certain standard, being consistent with how, you know, you don't want to do a bait and switch. I can't bring you over here talking about we're going to do all this and then you don't hear from me ever again. Or uh, we, we have this, we do that, and then you don't do it, right? Um, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to lose, I got to lose weight. I'm, I'm, I got way too heavy after getting injured here. And so I got to lose weight. I've got way too big. And so I'm like, you know, it's, I was telling the uh, nutrition person I'm talking to, I was like, you know, I feel like it's almost like I've done a bait and switch. You know, my wife married one dude. Now she's married to this this dude that's too heavy and and, and, and looking sloppy. And I was like, I got to get back to, to my uh, and they're like, I've never heard somebody say, I feel like I've done a bait and switch. <laughs> so I said, well, that's just kind of me. I like, I, I need to be what I presented to be, right? And so they're like, well, you know, we all grow older and get, get, uh, get a little weight. And that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, whatever. But again, you don't want to be one thing when they first meet you and then turn it into something else, right? You want to be consistent. And, uh, and people appreciate that. And people then go to uh, greater lists to make sure that they are what they presented themselves to be when they first met you. So uh, it's just a matter of being um, true to whatever standard that you have set. And, uh, and I think everybody, uh, no matter what kind of uh, issue may come up here and there, if you've been consistent, they understand. They will give you a pass when a pass is deserved. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you're you're so good at that too, Al. Like I, you are consistent. I know the Al I'm going to get. I can call you anytime. Um, I can ask advice. I can call to say hi. I can. I'm going to get the same Al. I don't have to worry that you're in one mood one day and what. And I know you're you're a human being. You're going to have different moods. But who who you present to be is who you are. And I think that, you know, when they discover that about us, the people that we serve, that builds trust. Nobody wants to, you know, have a relationship with somebody that's unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do or say or be uh, from one day to the next or if they're going to be volatile or maybe they're not going to keep their word or whatever. Um Everybody likes to know that they can count on, on you know, the person that they are partnered with. Yeah, and we know anytime we talk to Al that you're going to have the best analogies. I mean, I'm just going to call you and be like, hey, I've got this situation. Can you give me a story so that I can <laughs> communicate that better? <laughs> Every time. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think it's about um, what we have talked about over the past few minutes where we're like if you're going to grow where you're planted you're going to take initiative you're going to participate you're going to communicate and then we're going to celebrate and I think those are the things that that can keep you engaged and keep you growing where you're at and and help you get to a 
to a happy life. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love that. I like that too. Let, let's, you said those, those words rhymed. So what did you say? Oh, they did. That's funny. I said, um, like you need to take initiative. Yeah. So like be responsible, take ownership of what you're doing. So like, like, yep. And then you need to participate. Like Al said, like if there's no wood in the fire and it's not turned on, then it's not going to heat the room. So you've got to participate in, in making those things happen and then communicate. Don't do the silent treatment because nobody wins in a silent treatment and then celebrate each other and your successes. Yeah. I love that. That's great. That is great. So I feel like we've like solved all the world's problems today. So our time here is done guys. Our time here is done. Uh, but we don't pretend to have all the answers or, you know, to know how to do everything or do everything perfectly. But I think the key is when you love people, you try, you, you do the very best you can, um, for them because you are so invested in their success and, um, gl just glad to be in partnership with you guys. Love it. All right. Mm -hmm. So the great. I look forward to getting back with you guys again and share. We got really good feedback from our first, uh, podcast the other day. So hopefully this will be a benefit to, to others as well. And we'll, We'll keep it rolling.